Welcome to the video. In this video, we are revisiting Windsurf Editor by Codium. Um, and we are going to install, install extensions. Now, the great thing about Windsurf Editor being a, via, a fork of VS Code is that we have extensions that have been tried and true and used for years uh, that will work great with uh, the, v, the Windsurf Editor. Um, I have come up with a list of a few uh, extensions that should work really good and make our lives a lot easier while using the Windsurf editor. Um, and so I'm going to choose this first one and copy that. Now I have created or rather downloaded a copy of the Windsurf. I did log in um, to my Codium account and it is set up, but I have not linked this up with uh, my VS Code, and I have not linked this up with uh, GitHub or anything. So this is sort of a fresh install. I have uh, created, used the prompt to create a, um, a to-do application and a sample uh, uh, CSV uh, code here. So we'll, we'll look at that in a minute here. Um, I don't want that right now. <laughs> um, so when we're looking at extensions, installing extensions, we go to this left um, sort of menu here and we hover over this sort of cubed icon or cubes or squares icon. We click on that and now we can start searching. So the very first one we're going to install is VS Code Icons. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on it and choose it. And we can either install it from here or we can click here and install it. But first I want to take a look at our icons here. So currently we have this greater than or rather less than slash greater than sign and then the curly brackets and uh, this little dot thing here. But these icons look a little bit better. So if I go ahead and click install, you'll see that now these icons look a little different and uh, probably a little better. So that's one thing. Um, the next one we're going to install is going to be prettier. So we we'll go back to extensions. I'm just going to replace this. And now we're going to choose this. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Now, one thing you can do um, with these, um, when you click on them here, you can, of course, install it from here or over here. And of course, you can install it as well. But you also have a lot of information here. So the documentation, you can go through and read more about this. And they have resources, links over here. You have features and change logs. So you can go through and get a lot of details of what's going on with these uh, extensions. So now we've installed it prettier. Let's see what prettier does. So let's just choose one of our files here. And so I'm going to scroll up here to the top and I am going to just add a bunch of spaces here. And then I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm just going to tab over. So I removed all the tabs here. I've put this crazy amount of space here and just made it look ugly. So we need to make it look prettier. So what I'll do is I'll right click on here and then I'm going to go down to format document with, and then we'll choose prettier. And then instantly that big old space is gone. It's tabbed out everything. So it looks prettier <laughs> and we can save that. And that's good. So next we're going to look at rainbow CSV. So if you work with um, CSVs, which is, you know, you can export for from spreadsheets or <clears throat> you can import into databases and stuff. So CSV is a very common file. And when you look at something like this, it's just all white. There's commas. It's hard to know where your different columns are. We have ID and task and priority and due date and all of this. And then you have to go, okay, well, this is complete. That's the task. Where's the, where's the prior, oh, priority? I mean, this can be kind of confusing to look at. So let's add our CSV rainbow and we'll just go ahead and click install. And then I'll hide this and we'll go back to our CSV. And now everything is so well organized and much easier to find. So that's our next plugin. And now code spell checker. So let's go ahead and copy this, go to our extensions, and we'll paste that. And we are looking for code spell checker. Okay, and it's just basically, it's a basic spell checker that works well with code and documents. So. Um, it, it's just like a word speller or whatever. So if you misspell something like, you know, um, let's say uh, the, you know, I mean, or 
Okay, so if you misspell something, it's going to give you this little squiggly thing and kind of you can use different ways of fixing it and, and clean it up. So it's just a spell check. Um, next, we are going to, whoops, go back to our page here, color highlighter. So let's see what this is. Go back over here. We'll paste that. So color highlighter. This is pretty cool. Um, so right now, I'm um, just going to save that. Let's go over to our CSS here. So right now we have the colors and it's, it's just the, the, brown sort of, you know, look based on the theme that we chose or, or de by default. Um, so now if we go back here and we use this color highlighter and install it, and now it's installed, we go back to our CSS. And so now it's showing the actual color of our CSS here. So we can see that this color right here is this green and uh, that is of course white is all obviously white so that's pretty cool extension let's go on to our next one auto rename tag let's go to extensions we'll oops, select all that <clears throat> and we don't want the clone i haven't looked into that one yet but we'll go ahead and install that and now let's go back to our code so if we go here so we have this tab right here so um this tag so we see that right here it ends so now we're going to change the name of it so let's say it's div tag tt and we notice that as we um, change the uh, first tag it's changing the the end tag so if we didn't want this to be a div and instead we want it to be a paragraph tag we could just type in p and it changes the whole thing so that's a great little uh, useful plug in there Next is live preview. So this is a handy little tool as well. So we're going to replace all this. And we got live server, which we will look at next. But right now we want to do live preview. OK, so now let's go back to our documents. So let's go to our index.html. And we are going to right click on this. And we're going to sh click on show preview. And so now we see the preview of our HTML over here so we can test our app without having to open up the browser. So this is a, a nifty little handy uh, thing to have as well. Next, we'll just go into live uh, server. So I will just copy this, we'll go back. Whoops, we're gonna replace that, live server. And here it is. Go ahead and install live server. Excellent. Go back to our thing here. So now if we right click on this, we have uh, open with live server. So basically it takes our, um, our project here and actually creates a server. Whereas live preview is just sort of previewing the code um, it's not, it's not going to be acting like an actual server would be acting. So, um, it's good for HTML and simple, uh, projects, but when you want to, you know, test this in uh, more complex environments, live server. So if we click this, so now it'll open up in our browser and we can test this in the actual browser. So, um, so if we go test, add test, delete works great. Excellent. So that works good. Um, let's go back to our. OK, so now Docker, we've talked about Docker in previous videos. So there is an extension um, for Docker. And if we click on this, um, you can read the um, the the documentation here. But if you're using Docker, this is a great tool to have. It's going to make things uh, much easier and faster to work with. I'm not going to dive deep into this, but since we do use Docker, you'll have to have Docker, you know, installed and running on your machine. Uh, but go through this documentation. Uh, if you would like me to do a full video on this, I could do a, a full video on Docker. In fact, I will do that in the future. And uh, we'll look more into Docker and uh, this plugin. So, um, but there you go. So we've installed the Docker and it's a great uh, option as well. Peacock, let's go ahead and copy Peacock and we'll go back over here. We'll replace this. 
we'll go ahead and install Peacock. Um, so with Peacock, this lets us be able to sort of change the different environments that we're working with. So, um, so if we, we see this right here, it says open the extension sidebar, and this is how you install it. So just like we did, you search install, that's good. Okay, the documentation, uh, quick usage is the uh, create a VS Code workspace, um, only works uh, in workspace. So uh, if we click on this right here, we can open this up and look more into this documentation. Um, but the thing about Peacock, and I, I don't want to set up workspaces and do all this. I just want to kind of show you how it works. But it would be able to sort of make our workspaces give us this, this different color uh, scheme here. So if we had one project that we're working on and we wanted to go back and forth, it would just make it easier to see what project we're on. It's Instead of reading, okay, what, what's the project I'm on? Where's the text at? You know, is this the, the website I'm working on or the application? If we you know, having them color coded just makes it easier and faster to to uh, to find what, where we're at and what we're working on. So that's a great little one to also work on or to use. And last but not least, this is more of a uh, fun uh, way of <laughs> passing time. So <laughs> this extension, we'll just go ahead and uh, pull up our extensions and replace this. And so we have our uh, VS, VS Code pads here. So if you install this, you can just uh, use this to play. So while the AI is doing all the work for you and you're bored, you can uh, open up your uh, pet here and play with it. And uh, you can throw it a ball and do all kinds of things. So anyway, that was more of a, just a bonus sort of fun, uh, you know, uh, extension you can play with. So that's all the extensions for today. Um, I hope these are useful to you. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.